Hello, I'm retired Battalion Chief Larry Cockman, Chairman of the Greensboro Fire Department History Building Committee. The American Fire Service is rich in tradition and culture. A firefighter's life is filled with many emotional highs and lows, stories of major fires, national disasters, medical calls, firehouse living, and family life are often verbally shared from one generation to another. Many times these stories are lost forever when a firefighter passes away. In an effort to preserve these stories, in 2019, the Greensboro Fire Department History Book Committee launched a new program of recording audio video of our retirees' lives. These stories will be shared on our website, gfhbc.org. In 2020, we did not record because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please listen as these firefighters share their life experiences with all of us. My name is Tony Davenport. Uh, I came on the department a little different. I came from another division, another department. Um, I pushed a lawnmower down Wendover Avenue uh, starting uh, in, in 1983. Um, retired Deputy Chief Bill Osborne uh, told me to get a job in any department I could because I was too young to get on the 82 class. Well, lo and behold, it was two years before they hired another one. Uh, and in 1984, in September, uh, we came on. And uh, thanks to Chief Osborne's advice uh, and mentorship, uh, it was a great career. When I retired, I was uh, captain and lead fire investigator, uh, and I was also chaplain. I retired November the 1st, 2011, uh, after coming on the department in September of 84. I'm from the tobacco fields of Guilford County. Uh, until I went with the city, uh, tobacco was all I knew as a young boy growing up. I grew up hard and grew up well. had loving families from a Christian home. And um, when the fire department called, um, it was a gift from God. And I, I was able to have a career that I knew I would love. Had been a volunteer fireman out in Summerfield. To my knowledge, there's never been a Davenport on the department. Hasn't been one since. Uh, my sons went through the Naval and the Air Force Academies and uh, are active serving military today and um, don't have any other predecessors behind me. Always had a want to help people is what made me come on the department. Um, from talking to my mentors through the year, Chief Osborne and others, and, and hearing the stories of helping people and having a chance to give back to a community that had given to them. It, we lived out in the county, but still, Greensboro was the mother uh, you know, ship of, that, of this area and, and still is. And, and to be here um, and to be able to help people uh, in, in the life that you saw the, the, the firemen had and the camaraderie and the brotherships and just something, when you pick things in life that you want to be a part of, uh, that cream rose to the top. We were, uh, at the time I came on in 1984, um, uh, we were a class of all males. Uh, there was 30 of us. Um, and, and it was tough. It was nothing like I had ever seen in the county, being a volunteer. Um, uh, Chief Cox, Chief Brooks, Chief Jones was head of the division. Uh, tough. That's the only word that comes to mind. Uh, I remember when we went in the smoke lab the first week of training, uh, Chief Cox said, if you can't handle this, leave your stuff at the gate. Uh, and we went in the basement of the smoke lab with no air packs on and it seemed like we stayed down there for an eternity. Uh, but we made it and we made it together as a group. And um, unfortunately out of our class after after the fireman one test, we had lost almost a third. When I started with the city of Greensboro in 1983, I was making $4.75 an hour. Uh, after that year and a half coming on the fire department, um, I remember my first uh, year salary was somewhere around $17,000. And from four seventy-five dollars an hour, which is about $9,500 a year, a huge jump in pay for a a young man of 19 and a half years old. Working only one day out of three, 
Uh, and growing up in the fields, you worked every day uh, except Sunday morning. So those days off, I always put to good use. Some of the people in my training class was, uh, and one has went on way too soon, Pete Adderton. Um, we had several Browns, uh, Bullens, Bowman, Drew Clark, um, Kelly Colberth, a host of people come to mind. Um, and then my name should have been next on the list, um, but there's a story to that. So, funny stories, you know, in the fire service, they say if they don't like you, they'll leave you alone. Uh, they love me to death. Uh, from our battalion chief at the time, Clarence Higgard, um, I love that man to death. Uh, but my group at Station 1, Curtis Brown and I went to Station 1 right out of training on Engine 2. There was no Engine 1 at the time. Engine 2 went left and right. Um, and they picked on me unmercifully. Uh, Robert and I had just started dating my wife, uh, and she, the first time she came to the fire station, she pulled around at the back of the station, and I was tied to the basketball goal with ropes with a deluge gun on that little monitor trailer affixed to me, and it was all I could do, gasping for air. And she told me later, she said, what in the world has he gotten himself into? Um, but that's the kind of things that you put up with at Station 1 every day but the worst a few months later we had our fireman one test now at the time you passed it or you were gone they probably give you a half a dozen chances now i don't know but at the time you pass it or you are history we're all sitting at the table and chief higgard walks in with a piece of paper and he says i've got the results of the fireman one exam from yesterday and he just laid it on the kitchen table where we were eating and walked out, got in his car and left. Bill Smith looked at it and shook his head and Larry Sumner looked at it and shook his head and he passed it to me. And I went Adderton, Bowman, Bullens, Colbeth, Clark, and then it went to E and F. And I'm saying, well, maybe, I'm, maybe I just barely passed it and I'm down here at the end for whatever reason. It's supposed to be in alphabetical order, but it's not. Something's wrong with this list. And I wasn't there. Period. End of story. Career's over. Later on, Bill Smith tells me that my face just turned just flush white. And I went to the bathroom and I didn't come out. And he said, guys, maybe we went a little too far. Uh boy you know it wasn't a few minutes the real test scores appeared uh and had a great career but uh those guys i wanted to kill them that day so not so funny story <laughs> yeah not until did i know i was doing something special did i go into the bureau um i was on the squad i was always at active company one eight I uh, loved the squad, loved the guys I worked with, but I was always reacting to something that had already happened. And I'm a proactive person, always have been. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, how in the world can I do something that's more proactive to help people before this type of incident negatively affects their life? Um, and the Bureau came to mind. And just so happens, uh, for some reason, we wasn't able to hire more captains, and everybody in the Bureau was a captain. So it was another one of them pilot programs that I was first on. Uh, Chief Jones allowed myself, Kelly Culberth, and Mitzi Rice to go to the Bureau as firefighters. Now, we've all seen opportunities to our career through the years. At one time, if, if you were a squadman, you know, you're going to get promoted to captain, or if you were on hazmat back in the 70s, you're probably going to get to captain, or you know, I, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw that this could be a good thing, and, and sure enough, it wasn't uh, the very next uh, promotional process. Uh, Kelly and I passed the test, and, and uh, we were promoted the same day. My length of time on the department and in the Bureau, um, when I came on the department in 84, I already had three years of service. So I retired three years before anybody in my class. Um, 
you add that up with a year's worth of sick leave, I retired three and a half, almost four years earlier than anybody else. But um, went to Station 1 on Engine 2 with Lloyd Halsey, uh, riding the back of Engine 2, the coldest night in the history of the city of Greensboro. Uh, that was December of 1986, and it was eight degrees below zero. Bill Smith had to take water from the stove on the kitchen and pour on the pump panel to keep the gauges from freezing. Eight degrees below zero, never been a colder night since. Curtis Ray and I were on the back of engine two, and it was not an enclosed cab at the time. It was the seats that faced backwards, they were open, and uh, yeah, that was a, a rough night. But For nine years, I rode the trucks from station one to station 12. I uh, went on the squad. From squad 12, I went to squad eight, some of the best years of my career spent there with Mike Wright and Kenny Smith on, on squad eight with Ricky Willits and... Um, you know, it's just some, some great people over there. And uh, from there, I went to High Five. And uh, from there, I went to the Bureau and never looked back from the Bureau. While I was in the Bureau, I um, was able to uh, be one of the first uh, public information officers uh, that the fire department had. Um, and then later on, uh, piloted a program here, the, the very first bachelor's degree that was offered here in this building. Uh, I wanted a bachelor's degree. It was being offered from Winston-Salem's uh, Bible College. I had enough church on Sunday, I thought, but I wanted a bachelor's degree. Uh, and it was all being offered. Yeah, I had to walk across the parking lot, literally, to take it. Uh, but, you know, the Lord, you know, he, he provides. And uh, from that four-year bachelor's degree, if you already had a two-year associate, uh, we had a, a degree in biblical ethics, something akin to a divinity degree. And I'm thinking, Lord, what in the world am I going to do with a divinity degree? It wasn't three months later, Chief Grayson asked me to be chaplain of the fire department. Um, so never question God's plan. When, when, when I became chaplain of the Greensboro Fire Department, I, I, I in no way, I was a good firefighter, I was a good fire investigator. I wasn't a good chaplain. I didn't, I didn't think I knew enough about being a chaplain. I asked for courses, uh, and I was sent to attend. Um, helped my knowledge of, of what, you know, being a Christian man in no way puts you in line to be a chaplain in the fire service and the things that we have to see. Um, and, and dealing with families in a time of grief, um, and getting, getting up before your peers and speaking at so many funerals in a stretch of three and a half or four years. Um, uh, but the department equipped me, um, gave me the opportunity, um, and I was honored to be there to help families uh, for the last three or four years of my career uh, in need. Faith in my career, faith in my family, and family having faith in me. Um, it, it means so much as we go through our daily lives, and um, especially when you put the faith with, with the fire chaplain. I, I don't understand it. You could tell when you had to speak to families, grieving loved ones, people who had it and people who didn't have it. And how in the world do you go through times like that of losing a loved one? You know, we had a, a we had a mower fall on a captain, and, and to face his family, um, it was one of those families you could tell had faith, and I, just so many things come to mind. Jackie. Yes, um, and one of our officers down at Station Eleven, Jackie Spoon. We'd all, we'd already lost another Jackie way too too soon. Uh, Jackie Spoon was involved in a uh, 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 an incident at his home where a mower fell on him, and um, I remember that morning so well when he did not come to the station uh, and after he was found going to the family and um, without faith how do you how do you get through those things in life I do have nicknames um, boy uh, and some of these we won't repeat um, as a little as a young man as a, as a boy my name was toe uh, toe all of my family called me toe had a big toe, I guess. Uh, walking in the back of fields, barefooted, they called me toe. When I got on the department, uh, it changed to Bubba. How I got Bubba, I guess, being a southern redneck uh, from the back of fields of Guilford County, 
Um, half of the people I run into on the department now, they'll say, Bubba or Captain Bubba. One of the two, I'm Bubba. At Station One, Station One was the hub of everything, and, and I was honored to be a part of that for several years. Even coming back to Station One um, as Car 33 uh, in 2000, January 1st of 2000, and the, the pranks that you'd see people uh, playing on others, um, a, a rookie being told to uh, the, the fluorescent light bulbs were empty, had to take them down, and you refilled them from the ends to get them to, uh, to, to shine again. That was, that was a good one. Um, just uh, There's been more stuff uh, put in turnout gear uh, than, than you would want to, to admit through the years, although I never like to fool with a guy's turnout gear. Um, but the pranks are, are many in, in, the, in the fire service. Um, a lot of things happen when guys are sleeping. As you know, the beds at Station 1, they fold up in the, in the wall. You can imagine what happens with those. The phone system at Station 1 was, was kind of unique. It had a phone system with an intercom system built into it. And my bedroom as car 33 was across the bay. Um, it wasn't supposed to be a bedroom. It was a storage room. It doesn't have a secondary means of egress. Keep in mind, I'm a code enforcement official. But that's where I slept so every night. So um, the guys at Station 1, um, they would... They would um, make false calls for me to go to the other side of town if there was something over there by the time I got there they say hey would you pick up so and so from this store uh, or you know or, or, or they would put a, a mini drip on a, um, a a medical bag of saline solution right over your bed and about two o'clock in the morning reach over from the other wall next door and turn it on you know and it's hitting you right in the ear uh, but those type of things with with the phone and, and keep in mind at station one we had to keep a log all night back in the 80s of the other calls that the rest of the city ran. That, was, that wasn't a prank. That was a real deal. Chief Powell wanted it every morning. Always cooked and ate together at the station, uh, particularly Station 1. If, it, every station should have an Otis Sellers because uh, Otis was the cook. He was a good cook. <laughs> Only thing wrong with Otis Cook Day was you know that Chief Powell was going to come down and eat with you because he was going to call him. So nobody liked to eat when the chief was in the room. So you're always on pins and needles. But I love to cook. My meals were standard. I didn't deviate from plans. And any time I could get out of it, uh, a lot of times uh, somebody like uh, and, and Otis would, would trade you. I'll do your cooking if you'll do this for me. Uh, and, and I love to bargain and barter and... Uh, so I'd get out of cooking whenever I could. I like to cook Spam. I like to cook macaroni and cheese, uh, you know, the, the baked beans, the, the standard uh, firehouse meals, if you will, and, and, uh, and get away with ordering out whenever we could. I never liked the stations that had the cubicles. I liked the, the stations that had an open dorm because of the what's told, what's said, what's communicated between people that... Station 5 had the walls. There wasn't complete rooms, but still, you had your own little private space. Well, there's, uh, there's some negativism that go along with private. You didn't get to sit there and talk about, you know, that last call you ran together as long or, or, or just, you know, a training session would come up. You know, you'd be talking about ropes or something nice. Somebody would run to the truck and get a rope, and then before you know it, you're tying knots. You know, I don't, Sundays nowadays at the fire station, I can't speak much of. I, I have not been back to many fire stations since I retired almost 11 years ago. Uh, but they were certainly something at the time, uh, back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Um, there'd be kids running all over the fire trucks, playing, running through the bays. Um, uh, that was a, a great time to have family over and, and, and visit with family or, or, or friends. And um, of course, uh, later on car 33 on Sunday afternoons, uh, we, we were always attached to some type of a, an event or something going on uh, in town or uh, we, had, we had all of the bars to check. We, had, uh, uh, we did some CO work on the weekends. There was always some CO. Car 33 was the catch-all and we were all over at that time all four battalions. So Sunday afternoons later on in my career uh, were pretty busy. Car 33 was put in in June, January the 1st, 
2000. I'm running the first call on 33 to 600 block of Tate Street, house fire. Um, we worked a 24-hour shift just like everybody else did. I was assigned to C shift at the time, uh, and I was housed on the other side of the bay uh, at Station 1. Uh, later on, around 08 or 09, uh, car 33 got its own bedroom in the uh, fire prevention building. I told my wife this morning the value of what we're doing today to me is, is almost a, 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 it's provided some really good closure to my career, uh, maybe opening another chapter, um, but to, to, a lot of guys don't get an exit interview or, or get to talk about things after they retire with people who they, you know, I, I'm still working so I don't get to come to the breakfast or, or to the dinner uh, and to be able to do this and, and put my story uh, out to, uh, my, my kids are all over the country, one flies out of Seattle, one flies out of Maryland, um, you know, what did daddy do for almost 30 years and, and, and maybe they can open up this little uh, uh, site and, 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 and see what dad did. So thank you for this. You know, if a retired firefighter goes to a station, uh, the, the current guys need to know something. They're only one link in a really long chain. And the Navy has a statement, on the strength of one link in a cable dependeth the might of the chain. Who knows when thou might be tested, so live as to bear as the strain. It's one of the Navy's law. If your son went to the Naval Academy, you, you, you pick up on things like that. So them guys, it's important for them to know where they came from, not only where they're going, uh, and, and those little tidbits and stories that help strengthen that chain along the way. I went to Station 1, so guess where my first call was? I, my first call was 2314 North Church Street, Hall Towers. Uh, and it was a great place to learn to drive a fire truck because uh, Captain Halsey or Captain Sutton, uh, they would always let you drive back. Rookie, get up here. You know, and they'd let you drive back from the station. And before long, okay, if we get a call to Hall Towers, I'm going to let you drive down there. Oh, boy. Uh, and that's how I, you know, uh, the, those calls to, uh, to Hall Towers uh, helped me a bit. Although I never wanted to be a official driver or engineer, and I never was, um, it, it certainly, uh, you know, you drove enough fire trucks in your life. Engine 2 was a Han, and it wasn't too bad. Uh, but when Engine 1 was placed in service, and I moved across the bay at Station 1 to Engine 1, uh, if you didn't have the RPMs right with your road speed in that old 72 American La France, you wasn't going to gear up. There was no way. Especially going down the hill toward uh, Cornwallis or toward Yancheville uh, from Cornwallis or Church Street, going down the hill toward the ball field. Uh, if it was 2 o'clock in your morning, in the morning and you were in your bare feet, forgot to put your boots on, just saying, um, it was no way to gear that truck down. You know, the, the, the old, uh, the braking system on the old LaFrances, they were spongy, they would heat up, they were, um, it, you'd have to stand up on them uh, just about to, to get those. Now I guess they're, you know, the braking system is electronic and you tap it a little bit and it, you know, not then, it was all mechanical. You know, there's so much that the firefighter is called on to do, whether it's a medical call or a rescue or a firefighting. Um, I, 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 I got my picture in the paper one time for giving a dog oxygen at a house fire. A, a, a fireman, uh, the medical side, how many EMS bases are there in Guilford County or in Greensboro versus how close fire stations are, you know, to residential areas? A fireman's response to a medical call even if it's just basic uh, first aid or EMT first responder, it's critical. It's critical. As my own mother and father get into their mid-80s now, um, I, I see how f much faster the fire department can get there than the uh, closest medic show. The specialized teams on the city of Greensboro fire department have changed a lot uh, since I came on in 1984. Uh, just when we started repelling, we, we had the old, uh, you know, figure eight uh, binders, and, and now they got, uh, I guess, the rack system, and maybe they've evolved from that again. Uh, I don't know that uh, we had the old Scott two-way air packs. They've, you know, now, um, are we still within a Spiro? Maybe that's changed since uh, 
but it, it's it's constantly evolving and you know it's no longer 200 years of of history unimpeded by progress the fire service is at the forefront of change in so many areas 9-11 changed my own opinion of firefighters and I was one at the time it's one of those things you you remember where you were I was at a rental house over on Yanceyville my bobcat wasn't working and I came to which is just two miles away I came over to station one to get a wrench off engine one I was going to put it back, uh, but I needed to work on my bobcat. And uh, fireman come out the back door and said, have you heard? And I spent the next three hours glued to that TV, sitting there with everybody else you know, in, in, in the kitchen. 9-11 uh, changed the way we did business. Um, you know, we ourselves were locked down for several days and um, it changed the way the world did business. Any incident that I was a part of that, that may have changed a training directive, um, I, one comes to mind, and I hadn't thought about this call for years. Uh, one Sunday morning, we had a fire up on Elm Street um, at United Rental. It may have been called A1 Rental at the time, but it, it was up on, you know, um, Chuck Smith and his crew off Engine 7 had made an interior attack. Uh, Danny Shoemate was... Uh, uh, command. Um, I was getting ready to go in. I'd already been in one time as well, uh, and and something happened inside. Uh, I don't know if it was a flashover or what it was, but um, Chuck got hurt. Um, and after that call, there there seemed to be a buzz of accountability um, and, and how we reported on a fire ground for. Um, uh, people that was inside doing doing interior attack. My mentors from Greensboro Fire Department go back, go way back. Uh, first of all, uh, retired Deputy Chief Bill Osborne, a dear friend of our families, went to church together all my life, and and Bill told me when I was a, a young kid, still in high school, he said, "Tony, if you'll do what I tell you, I'll get you on Greensboro Fire Department," and and I did. Um, I was I was smart enough to listen to people who knew more about several things in life than I did and and Bill knew the fire service and so thank you Chief Osborne for for your mentorship to me um, Ralph Sutton how many people remember an old captain named Ralph Sutton that was just tried and true every day uh, December the 1st of, of 1986 we started the 457 program for firefighters uh, and, and Ralph was an old captain and he said Tony this is too late in my career for this to help me but if you'll put every dollar you can in this when you retire at 30 years you'll have something he was right <laughs> um, but Mr. Osborne Captain Sutton um, great captains that were just tried and true good captains Ricky Willits um, uh, Danny Shoemate uh, influenced me a lot. Clarence Hilliard uh, influenced uh, me a lot. Just, just good people who, um, if you think people aren't looking at you as you carry yourself in life, you're wrong. There are people that are looking to you for their own lives every day. You know, the, the challenges of my career and the challenges that I that I've faced while I was a Greensboro firefighter um, probably probably started. Soon after I got out of rookie school, we had a call at number seven, Lake Spring Court, uh, engine two and engine seven, no engine one at the time. Uh, uh, and, and that call challenged me to look deep inside myself. Robin and I wasn't even married yet. Uh, it was her birthday, June the 10th uh, of that year. Uh, and being upstairs, it, gas leak, and we didn't know at the time, gas leak coming off of a, a main at the back of the building, um, challenged me to the point of really looking to myself and saying, "If I'm gonna change careers, I need to do it soon because I'm a rookie here, and I, can, you know, I still got time to." Uh, I made the right decision to stay, um, but but without the help of other people, um, when you're scared and you're really scared, uh, it, it'll shake you to your core. And that day, I was scared good things that's happened in my career and bad things that's happened in my career. A, 
a bad thing that's just a heartbreak. Um, I was a young fire investigator uh, on car 33, and a lady on Julian Street was running an illegal daycare. Um, her husband, unbeknownst to her, this was in the, the wintertime, had put gasoline in a kerosene heater. Uh, she had a couple of kids there on the back porch that she was keeping uh, money under the table kind of thing, and um, she lit the kerosene heater, and it, it blew up. Um, and having to face parents and, and tell them that their child was no longer here uh, and, 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 a, and a brief overview of why. Um, tough. It's very tough. Um, one of the hardest calls I, I had during my career. Um, somebody who's had a chance to live their life is hard enough. Uh, but when it's, when it's an infant, when it's a child, it's, his life has barely started. And of no fault or consequence of their own, um, the only thing you can say is they're with Jesus. Well, it goes back to a question earlier of, of, of faith uh, and family and the way you cope with those bad things, that, that those bad calls uh, that, that you had during your career. Um, a, a person without faith, how they do this job is beyond me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it matters if you lose someone that you're close to or a, a brotherhood like a, fire, a fireman or... Uh, I go back to, to losing someone like a, a Jackie Spoon uh, who, who, who should not be dead uh, in your own eyes as, as a human being. You say that, that, that accident should not have happened. You know, you shouldn't be under a lawnmower and have a lawnmower fall on you. And, um, you know, you, it, it's okay to ask why. Um, we all ask why. It's okay to question God. Um, he'll, he'll give you the answers uh, if, if you're in his will. But again, without that faith, I don't, I don't see how you get through those. I had two female firefighters that I worked with very closely, uh, and one of them I'll call a sister. Um, Mitzi Rice was a dear friend of mine. Uh, I buried horses for that girl when, when, when a horse died, or, or we did things away from the department. Of, um, uh, we, we've walked the halls of the Greensboro Coliseum as fire prevention officers night after night after night, just talking about life and things. Um, uh, and, and to see her pass, uh, another one of those you want to ask why. Um, uh, Mitzi had uh, a lot of influence on me uh, uh, through the years, and, and I loved her dearly. Um, then I worked with Kathy Smith in the Bureau, thought the world of Kathy, um, uh, was able, I, I supervised Kathy for, for a little while and, and we talked often. Um, those two ladies had the, probably the most impact on me uh, during my career, of any females. Will I do it all over again? Would I make any changes? Yes, I would do it all over again. I wouldn't change Cause and effect. Uh, if you, you know, you, it, I don't care if you're building a house or, or if you change something, it affects something else. And then that affects something else. What was the old movie? Um, it's a Wonderful Life. Because you wasn't here to do this, this didn't happen. Or this did happen. Um, I wouldn't change a thing because I, it might trigger something else. Um, you know, uh, this, one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me was being here after my faith and my wife and on down the line, this, this certainly ranks third or fourth or fifth. Um, I, I would not change a thing. Um, to my wife, I say, honey, I love you, I always have. Thank you. Um, she is quick to remind me that of a 30 year career, which I didn't quite have, um, I was there 10 years. Uh, one day out of three, you know, you're at the fire station. So uh, we've had Father's Day, my birthdays, kids' birthdays uh, on the back of car 33 more than one time. It's, you know, it's you're supposed to be at the station on a Sunday afternoon. I'm the one that didn't show up. They come by and, well, Tony's on the call on the other side of town. You know, they've come to a fire scene more than one time. They, um, the family, um, 
and, and the wife is the catalyst of that family for a firefighter uh, when he's gone and, um, you know, keeping the kids in line when you're not there. And um, she never delegated that till I got home. She took care of it. Um, I got a very strong wife and I thank God for her. I do. Um, I have two wonderful boys. Um, my oldest, Tyler Wesley, he's a major in the Marine Corps. He graduated from uh, Annapolis. Um, he flies the Osprey. Our youngest, uh, Spencer Ryan, uh, he graduated from the Air Force Academy. Uh, and he flies the uh, C-17 heavy cargo. He's flew stuff around this world that we can't even talk about. But I'm, I'm so proud of those boys. And, um, you know, a fireman's gone a lot. Without that good woman to give them what they need in life, there's no way they turn out the way they did. I got two great, wonderful granddaughters, twins, uh, by Tyler Wesley, my oldest. Um, my youngest, Spencer Ryan, he's not married yet. He needs to hurry up and get me some grandchildren. Uh, but my oldest, uh, Virginia uh, and April, and they are seven, and they start the first grade today. Uh, and I love them dearly. They live in Pax River, Maryland, uh, where Tyler's a test pilot. My affiliation with uh, national organizations goes back to NFPA, um, and it's why I have the position that I have now as a contractor with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Uh, for some reason, and I can't tell you why, uh, back in 2008 or 9, Grover Pettigrew and I, uh, you know, all you had to do was have a state inspection certification and you can inspect buildings as a fire marshal. Well, we decided to go to South Carolina where uh, NFPA was holding a, a national uh, inspection certification. Um, stayed down there for a week to get it. And uh, lo and behold, um, now we got that certification from, from NFPA as fire inspectors and um, uh, it is the certification that the federal government requires to do inspections in their prison facilities. So in 08 or 09, after I got that, um, I was at uh, up, up, uptown at 307 North Church Street for Dismas Charities uh, doing a routine fire inspection. And one of their regional vice presidents was in there, Kathy Ballou. And she asked me if I happened to have this special certification. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I just got that. Um, I got a call a couple weeks later asking if I'd go to Tucson, Arizona, do a fire inspection. Uh, and from 08, it was on. Um, that's what I did more than anything on my days off was work for Dismas Charities, do fire inspections around the country. Um, and then later on, they hired me full time after I retired. And uh, I was able to hire Grover Pettigrew to take my old position. So he and I still work together today um, doing fire marshal inspections around the country and we'll get in some heated discussions uh, at, at federal facilities around the country and they'll look at like, do y'all know each other? Mm -hmm. I said, only 40 some years, yes ma'am. There was a time if you went into the bureau you were either crippled or crazy. <laughs> um, one of the two. That's not the, the case anymore. Um, the Bureau is a, if, if you want to stay somewhat in your field after you leave a career here in Greensboro Fire Department, you, there are certain certifications uh, that you need out there in the private sector that will help you along the way. Very few of them is just fighting fire. Um, international certifications with NFPA, um, uh, with uh, OSHA, uh, some other organizations that I'm affiliated with as well. Um, the Bureau is one of those places that can afford you those opportunities to have a second career and be careful what you ask for. The value of fire safety, um, whether it's a, a public information officer for the fire department or through the Bureau for a safety specialist or, or a job like Mitzi Rice used to have as, as a public education officer, um, uh, the, the more that, and I can't see one person in, in a city this size, you know, uh, one person can coordinate that, but it's got to be a team um, 
to, to get those things done. One person, no, no way that, that can be done. But uh, what you can get out there for, uh, for residences, for businesses, uh, to promote fire safety uh, in, in general, um, boy, it's, it's valuable. I never was. I, I came to the city uh, right out of high school, uh, and, and I never was uh, in the military. I, I don't know where my sons got their love. I guess it was my dad to go in the military, but I never was. I consider a successful firefighter to be no different than any other successful man or woman in life. It's not whether you made an officer or you made other rank. It's got nothing to do with rank and position. Uh, it, success comes from within. Um, you know, if, if, if you were able to do this job for 25 or 30 years and hold on to your family and hold on to your wife uh, and, 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 and love them as much today as you did the day you started uh, and keep, keep things properly prioritized, uh, I would say, uh, would be very instrumental in, in, in being successful. Because as my wife reminds me, uh, priorities can get out of hand in a hurry. If I was going to talk to a rookie recruit or training class, um, David Bullens used to let me do this. Uh, and, and this was 25 years ago, so I was always talking about them, talking with them financially or through the Bureau's eyes. Um, telling them to invest all the money they could in their 457 or what great opportunities the Bureau could afford them later on in their career. Um, I, I would remind them not to be single focused, uh, to keep their eyes wide open, uh, to look at all of the opportunities that were available in the fire service, um, <clears throat> and remind them financially that tomorrow comes quick. Uh, do what you can uh, to prepare for that uh, because nobody uh, is going to, to help you when you get there if you haven't helped yourself. Health-wise, I've held up pretty good. I'm, I'm still only 59. I, I'm, I've been retired 11 years. I, I retired when I was 48. Um, uh, maybe my knees are about half shot as well. Um, got a little carpal tunnel in the left hand, but other than that, I'm in uh, in pretty good shape. Um, I thank the Lord for that and um, hopefully last a few more years. I have several hobbies. Um, number one, Smith Mountain Lake. Uh, my wife and I are there every, we've been up there for 20 years. I've never put a fish hook in the water, believe that or not. Uh, but, but boating on Smith Mountain Lake and, and uh, seeing my youngest son behind my boat um, those are my hobbies. Or walking through the woods, hunting with my oldest. Uh, um, those are my hobbies. Um, or Robin and I just riding the golf cart around the farm. Um, that's the things I love to do. They all include family. There's not a lot about Tony that's not an open book already. Um, um, I, I, I'm pretty much an, an open book. I, my life has been that way. Um, there's not a lot of secrets. Um, if there are a few, I certainly won't tell them here. But uh, um, it, it's what a ride. Uh, I've, I've really, really enjoyed this place. I would like for the fire department to remember me by knowing that I was honest, hardworking, um, that I put my family before this job whenever I could. Um, and, and that, that um, especially when I took the position of chaplain, um, I didn't have to. Uh, I, I did it because I loved the people that was here, and I thought I had something to offer. And, and I hope along the way uh, made someone else's life a little bit better. The only message I'd like to leave uh, for my family uh, and for my coworkers uh, is a thank you uh, for support love uh, through the years that uh, I was able to uh, never work a day in my life because I always enjoyed coming to work. I always enjoyed the people that I worked with. Uh, and to, to leave, some guys are either, they're at home and they hate to come to work or they're at work and they hated to go home. 
I was at work and I wanted to get home. I was at home and I wanted to get to work. Um, I loved them both and loved family more. Uh, so blessed. So my message would be, if you can find that in life, you're a blessed man. I don't know of anything else that comes to mind I'd like to talk about. Um, uh, I've, I've, I came into this wanting to thank a few people, Bill Osborne in particular, and um, uh, some, some of the captains that I had uh, through my career. Um, uh, but uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to... Uh, it's not much of a story, but it's mine, uh, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to, get, it, to get it out there. Uh, in closing, the Greensboro Firefighters History Book Committee Hopes you have gained a greater insight into the dangers, the challenges, and emotional events that have influenced and shaped the American firefighter.